Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you my panties. Now you don't have to worry. I'm not going to be wearing them. I mean, I'm wearing underwear right now, but I'm not going to show you me wearing my underwear. No, I don't. I don't think y'all can handle all that jelly that I got, okay? So, anyways, um, I have been making my own underwear for the past month, and um, I'm going to be sharing with you the pattern that I've been using for that, because I really like this pattern. It's really easy to put together. You know, I have made a lot of things, but I have not made everything that I want to make yet, I haven't made any underwear. Well, yes, I have now. <laughs> I haven't made any bras. I haven't made lingerie. I have not made jeans or pants yet. Um, I haven't made a lot of shirts, just t-shirts. Today, I'm gonna be showing you uh, the underwear pattern that I've been using. And I really like this pattern, so I highly recommend that um, you try it out, especially people who are new at sewing because it's a really easy pattern to follow. So here we go. The first pattern that I tried is the panel undies from Rad Patterns. It has all the sizes included, which range from an extra extra small up to a 4X, which goes up to a 68 inch hip. So obviously these are called panel undies because they have a side panel, which you can mix up with different prints. And I think I can use some of my small scraps left over from past projects. So this pattern has the two side panels, the front piece, the back piece, and a crotch piece. And this is showing the waistband and leg banded option. This pattern also has different rise options. So it has a hipster rise, a mid-rise brief, and a high-rise brief. And this is the banded edge option, and this is the elastic edge option. I'm also going to be sewing up the Lucky Undies, also from Rad Patterns. These have the same size range, starting with extra extra small, up to a 4X in adult sizes. This has just a front piece, a back piece, and a crotch piece. You also have the option to do a banded leg or waist and or an elastic, like a fold over type elastic. So the Lucky Undies also comes with the Hipster Rise, which has full booty coverage and sits at the hip. Then the Mid Rise Brief has full booty coverage and sits halfway between the hip and belly button. And also the High Rise Brief has full booty coverage and sits at the natural waist. Then there's the cheeky option that sits right at the hip with a balance of sexy and booty coverage, but it looks like it's gonna go up on your booty right here. Then there is the bikini that sits at the bottom of the hip with moderate booty coverage, a thong, and then there's optional booty ruching available on all styles except for the thong. So I'd like to mention that this video is not a tutorial on how to do these panties. This is just a review with my opinion and what I learned on making the pattern uh, four or five times. So anyways, this is not a tutorial. This is a pattern review. So here is the very first pair that I tried making. This is the panel undies with elastic in the waist and in the legs. And this was a size 2X in the hipster rise version. One thing that I didn't like about this one was the hipster rise was too short for my belly. I am a plus size gal and so I'm needing a little more coverage up here. So the next time I'm going to try the higher rise version and also I do not like how my elastic is showing right here in the legs. I'm a little sensitive to latex and elastic so I really don't like this part touching my skin. So next time I'm gonna have to do better 
on stitching that down. This was my very first pair. And I think they came out pretty good. Probably going to be giving them to my daughter though because they don't fit. Okay, so for number two, I went ahead and tried out the Lucky Panties, the different other pattern. And this one I did the high rise, the highest one. And I tried um, doing the banded waist and banded legs. Sorry, it's a little wrinkled. I just got it out of the dryer. <laughs> and so this one was much easier to put together than the last pattern because there's less pieces. But um, the leg bands are a little more difficult than doing elastic, in my opinion. And also the fabric that I chose, this is um, like a t-shirt fabric. Although it does have uh, the right amount of stretch, it doesn't really have good recovery. It doesn't go back. It kind of gets stretched out. And I also use the same type of fabric for my bands. And this was real cheap fabric because, you know, I'm still practicing. So this is what I would call a wearable muslin. Um, you know, when you're learning to sew, be expected to make a few mistakes. <laughs> I'm not learning to sew, but I'm learning how to sew panties. And uh, you would think that I would know how to do everything, but no, that's not the case. Um, with every new project, there's something new to learn. So also, one thing I learned is uh, my straight stitch is not real stretchy. I did all the things I was supposed to do to adjust my uh, tension and the length of the stitches to make uh, like a stretchy straight stitch, but it didn't do a good job. I've already popped some stitches here. So next, <laughs> next project. Also, these are freaking huge. Like these are some granny panties, y'all. Um, <laughs> way too high. Next time I'm going to Go down to the, uh, the mid-rise size. These are also 2X. Let me show you a difference. These are 2X. And the pink ones are 2X. But see the difference in the height? And it just seems a little wider, the pink ones. The bands on the legs are going to add a little bit of um, extra width to your crotch piece, so that's why it looks a little bit bigger. Alright, so for number three, I went back to the panel panties. This one I did a lower rise, but I didn't do the mid rise. I actually adjusted it for my body and I kind of went in between high rise and mid rise. So I'm going to call this new rise <laughs> and I did elastic. This is um, a decorative frilly elastic that you put on the outside of the waist. And I used a double zigzag stitch here, which was better for stretching, but not perfect because in the back, I popped a few stitches. I've worn these a few times. So that's something I need to figure out. Also, I did on the legs this time, I tried doing a serger. Um, I used my serger to attach the elastic to the leg first, and then I flipped it over and did a zigzag stitch to hold it down. Now, I'm not liking how that like curls. Can you see how it's all curly and not laying straight? I really don't like that. Um, I think I needed to stitch much closer to the edge here with the zigzag to hold it down better. I'm not sure. But anyways, I did a, a better installment of the crotch piece here. This is actually a cover stitch. 
So it's much stretchier. There's the back, much nicer. I do like the elastic on the outside right here. I like the decorative look. So that's number three. All right, so for number four, I went back to the panel panties again. So I really like that one. And um, I had scrap fabric I wanted to use. This actually was a pair of leggings in another life. <laughs> um, also, these were a pair of leggings that I cut up. And the first one, these were a pair of leggings. My daughter had these leggings that um, the crotch and the inner legs wore out. So I used these because the side fabric was still really good and the leg fabric. And since I'm learning and I didn't want to um, use, you know, real good fabric, why not? I thought that was a really great idea. So this is number four, uh, another pair of panel panties. And this time I used uh, ruched elastic and I did this application better than the last time because I first started the elastic out on the wrong side and I zigzagged the edge of the fabric on and then I flipped it over so the raw edge of the fabric is tucked inside and then zigzag it again on top or on there. So that is a lot better than the last time. It's a lot stretchier. I don't think I'm gonna pop any of those stitches. Uh, I really like the legs. Turned out a lot better this time also because I tried doing the zigzag very close to the edge of the elastic. And you can see the difference in that, how much better that is from the last pair. See these lay down and these are funky and I think I stretched it wrong. <laughs> so getting better. That was number four. Also, oh, I forgot. I put a little booty ruching on this one to try it out. Um, it looks real cute on the panties, but when I put it on, you can't really tell that it's there. They just stretch out. I think maybe I should use a stronger, wider piece of elastic. This first time I tried it with a really narrow, like I think it's an eighth of an inch elastic and just zigzag that on real quick. Also, when I put them on, I these ones kind of right up a little bit right here on the leg. And I think that might be due to adding the ruching. So I think if I want to do that again, I would probably maybe go up a size. I don't know. Or maybe I just won't do the booty ruching again. Not really a fan. So then um, I found in my daughter's Goodwill giveaway bin this dress. <laughs> it was a bodycon tight, like a raglan sleeve dress that she didn't like. So I cut it up and I made three pairs. <laughs> I forgot to get a picture of the dress before I cut it out, but you can see here that I used the back piece to cut out the front and back pieces of the panel undies, and I taped them together at the crotch so it was cut out as one piece, which was a big time saver. Then the raglan sleeves became the side panels. Well, I also added this fabric. This is from Joann's. Um, it was very similar to the dress fabric. The dress, it's really nice and soft. I believe it's a double brushed poly. So this is another pair of panel panties. These black stripes I took off of the sleeves of the dress. And these ones I really like. They fit really great. Um, I actually think adding this to the panel made it, um, I don't know, more supportive right there. And um, this time I used my cover stitch on my elastic. So first I just zigzagged the elastic onto the edge and then folded it over so that I could cover stitch on top. Okay. 
The more I use this cover stitch machine, the more I like it and the better my results are getting. And that looks so much better. So nice and stretchy. And I also did um, cover stitch on my waistband elastic. And then I also got this pair. This is a pair of panel, panel panties. And these are all in the new rise that I created or I um, adjusted for my waist. So I got two pairs identical. And then this one, that was all from one dress and then a little couple extra pieces from another fabric. Okay, so this is another pair that I made. Um, I went back to the Lucky Undies for these because I kind of wanted these to be a larger brief style. This fabric is left over from my skirt that I made. Um, I made a Stevie skirt from Rebecca Page Patterns. So this matches my skirt. <laughs> this is actually left over from the waistband of my skirt and the main fabric. So I'm thinking I'm gonna be wearing these underneath my Stevie skirt. Um, and I'll probably wear a smaller pair of panties underneath. This will be kind of like a cover up brief, you know, just in case the wind blows my skirt up. Then all you get a peeky of is more mermaids. <laughs> And here is number nine, another pair of panel undies. I had just enough of the mermaid fabric for the side panels of another one, adding in this purple um, heavy jersey knit. So for this one, the waistband has a quarter inch elastic in it. And um, I just did the cover stitch on, that was pretty tricky. I cover stitched the crotch panel in. And for the legs, I first zigzagged them on and then cover stitched. Um, so they're really nice and stretchy now. You can see my zigzag stitching, but it's on the inside, so it's okay. I didn't do it on the waistband. Uh, that was a little tricky, like I said, but I really like how they turned out. This is probably my favorite pair so far. So what have I learned from this process? Uh, number one, make muslins and not just one, a couple. Um, if you don't want to ruin good fabric, I suggest go through your closet and see if there's any articles of clothing that would be suitable, that you don't wear anymore, that you can cut up and practice sewing on it. Um, also check thrift stores like Goodwill. You might be able to find clothing that has never been worn. I have. I found brand new things at the Goodwill before sold for cheap that I plan on using for other projects. Now, my daughter was going to throw away that dress or give that dress to Goodwill. It was brand new. She bought it without even trying it on. <laughs> so, yeah, when you get it home and you figure out, oh, it doesn't fit, and you lost your receipt, then what do you do with it? Give it to Goodwill? No, give it to Mommy. Mommy will cut it up and make underwear. So one of the main things that I did learn from this process was always test your stitches. Test it out on scrap pieces of fabric. Pieces of fabric that are just like the one that you're gonna be sewing on. After you cut out your pattern, save these little pieces. You can just do little test stitches right on these so you know exactly how it's gonna turn out on your project. Take the time to try the different zigzags, especially the lightning stitch, and adjust the length to see what works best on your machine. Then test on your swatches to see how they react to your fabric. Then make sure to test it out and stretch it a few times to see if you need to adjust the tension at all before sewing your panties. Also, what I've learned, uh, my favorite way of putting these together is the serger for putting like the side seams in uh, together and then my cover stitch, which is covered up back there. That's the cover stitch. I know not everybody is going to have a cover stitch machine 
and I'm sorry, but I feel that is the best machine for finishing um, like hems and for finishing the elastic part and for the crotch panel. I mean, it was the best stretchy stitch I could get out of all of my machines. So yeah, cover stitch machines. So also I think the panel undies and the lucky undies are very, very similar, but the lucky undies are the ones with just the two pieces. Um, those feel a little bit wider, like a little bit more full booty coverage with that one, which I don't mind. Um, but the panel undies are really like them, probably because, I don't know, they, they seem more fun to put together, more fun to wear. So my vote is for the panel undies. Those are my favorite right now. So if you would like to get your own copy of this pattern, uh, you can go to Facebook and search the Rad Patterns uh, discussion group um, and join. I can put a link in the description below for her website also to get these panties. I'm not affiliated. I don't have an affiliate link. I'm not getting any kind of kickback for doing this. I just wanted to share uh, what I've learned about making panties and encourage you to go out and make your own. So thank you so much for watching. Leave me some comments in the section below. Let me know if you have made this pattern or if you plan to try making it. Uh, and your comments on this video are appreciated. Thanks so much for being here. And I will see you next time.